What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So uh, in this video I'm going to talk about a website that I found where you can download free textures and import them into your SketchUp models and also in your V-Ray renderings. So one of the things I always struggle with when I'm working with renders is actually finding decent textures with all the maps and everything else that you need to make them look realistic. And so last week I was going through some different websites and uh, one of the ones that I really like is Polygon.com. And so I figured I'd make a video just showing how to download some of the free textures on there as well as how to import them into your model and set up the maps so that everything's going to look a little bit more realistic. So two things. First of all, I did receive a month-long membership to Polygon um, after reaching out to them, but I was going to make this video anyway because I really like the way they've set everything up. So I always want to be completely open and honest about that with you guys, but this is a I wouldn't make the video if I didn't think that it was a good good resource. Um, second of all, there is a paid version, but there's also free textures that you can download or bring into your model. So you don't have to pay for anything to use this service. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off, to download these materials, you're going to want to go to www.polygon.com. So um, you're going to want to visit that website and you're going to want to go in the upper right hand corner for the option that says sign up. And you're going to want to click on that. You are going to have to uh, sign up in order to download even the free materials, but you don't have to pay for anything in order to do that. So once you've gotten all signed up and you've logged in, you're going to want to go up to the textures section. And uh, you can see how when you mouse over this, there's a whole bunch of different options in here. In this case, we want to focus on the free textures section. And so when you click on the free textures section, Section, what that's going to do is that's going to basically pop up a list of all the textures that are in here for free. And there's actually a number of really cool looking textures in here. So in addition to that, one of the things that I may make a video about in the future, especially if you guys are interested in it, is they also have what's called imperfection maps. So if you look at this smudges large 01, for example, that's actually a map that you apply over like a glass material to make it look more realistic. Because generally speaking, when you render things, one of the problems is they look really clean. And um, in, in the case of like glass and stuff like that, it doesn't really look super realistic because there's always some kind of like smudges or I think there's one down here. There's a scuffs down here. I thought there might have been a scratches as well. Um, there's a dirt wipes down here. So that's something I may talk about in the future. But um, one of the things that I really like about basically the way this whole system works is it's really easy to understand. So you just look at these texture previews and we're gonna find one that we like. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick the plaster 17. And so when you click on it, what this is gonna do is this is gonna pop up a preview of what the texture is gonna look like. So it shows you the texture image. It also shows you kind of a rounded box where everything's been mapped on here. So you can see what that texture is gonna look like when you render it. And so in addition to that, if you look off to the left hand side, you can select the different resolutions of images that you can download. So remember, higher resolution images are going to look better, but they're also gonna run slower in SketchUp. And you could probably couple these with the V-Ray proxies, but in this case, we're just gonna pick the middle option. And then one of the other thing I, things I like about this is all of these come with the different maps or they come with different maps available. So if you look at this one, this one has the diffuse, which is basically the image that you're gonna use, but it also has a gloss map, a normal map, and a reflection. And so you can go ahead and download this one. I'm gonna pull up another example. So if you go to like, let's say we were to pick one of these, there's like a ground tire tracks texture. And so you can see the ground tire tracks texture also has kind of upraised different things on here. Well, what this has is this has what's called a displacement map. And some of these have these, some of them don't. But basically what that does is that's gonna tell a rendering program like V-Ray to actually um, render it as if the basically as if the image had moved. So this gives this like real thickness and real roughness in addition to kind of the bump mapping, normal mapping that you can download. So I like how these all come together in one package. And so when you click on that, what that's gonna do is that's gonna download that all in a zip file. So now I'm gonna show you how to import those into V-Ray. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the V-Ray Studio that I've created over on my other channel, the Rendering Essentials. And I'll link to a note about setting up a studio um, 
I'll link to another video that I did over there so that you can see kind of how to do this. But basically, it's just a very simple backdrop with three lights in it. And uh, so you could also probably light this with like an HDR image. That's another note is there's also HDR files that you can download on Polygon. So there's like a sky, but there's also these interior lighting that you could use to light different products. So they don't just have textures, they also have HDRs, um, they have some photo scan stuff. There's a whole bunch of different things in here. But um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a very simple example. And so I'm going to start off and I'm just going to draw a box. And I'm just going to extrude it up and give it some thickness. And I'm going to go ahead and group it. So I'm going to right click and say make group. and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm just going to do an interactive render. So when I do an interactive render, you can see how basically what I'm getting here is I've just got this, this non-textured object in here with my light bouncing off of it. And so what my lights are doing is they're giving me kind of a preview of the way everything's, everything's going to look. So once you get that kind of set up, what you can do is you can come into your V-Ray Asset Editor. And when we get into our V-Ray Asset Editor, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material. And so in this case, what I'm going to do, and this would probably work if you brought this in with the SketchUp Materials Editor as well, but um, we'll go ahead and work with this for right now. We're just going to come down in our Materials list in the Asset Editor, and we're just going to click the button for Add Material. And so in this case, we're just going to add a generic material. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring in a gray material. Um, it's not going to have any color, or it's not going to have any like images applied to it or anything like that. And we can go ahead and we can apply that to our selection. So in this case, we're applying this to this object. So now if we were to come in here, do an interactive render, this would now be gray because that just has the generic gray color assigned to it. And we may mess around with our lighting a little bit later or we may not. We'll kind of see where the video goes. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this just to stay organized. And so a lot of the time what I'm doing is I'm kind of labeling these based on where I got them as well as by material. So um, you need to figure out your own organization system. But in this case I'm going to say polygon, plaster, material. And then one other thing I'm going to do, and I talked about this in another video, is uh, round off my corners real quick. So I'm going to double click um, inside this object, and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to use the extension round corner. You could also do this by using the follow me tool in order to kind of round these edges off. But in this case, I'm just going to bevel these edges. And so I just, I'm going to select my top face and this kind of has a bevel in here. You can see how these lines show where that bevel is going to be. That's just going to make things look a little bit more realistic around that edge. And I'm going to go ahead and click Generate Geometry. Then I'm going to click back out of here. So you can see how that gave me a beveled edge on the top. That's just going to increase our realism in our render. So now what I'm going to do is we've got our polygon plaster material. We're going to start applying the different maps and materials to this material, or the different maps and the different texture images to this material. So to start off, we're going to add our diffuse. And so diffuse is basically diffuse is basically what the image looks like. So if you create just a default material, this is just going to come in here as a color. So you could adjust the different colors in here, and you can see how that material image is going to be that color. Well, you can also apply an image in here for a texture. And so you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna click on this little box, and then you're gonna go down to bitmap. And when you go down to bitmap, what that's gonna give you is that's gonna pop up a window where you can go find that material that you downloaded. And in my case, I'm gonna go into the plaster 17 folder. And since we downloaded this at a 3K resolution, we're gonna go in the 3K folder. And you can see how we've got a few different things in here. We've got a gloss map, a normal map, a reflection map, and then up above here, these are your diffuse color options. So if I was to right click and I was to change these to large icons or maybe extra large icons, you can look at these. But basically these are your texture images. So you can see how this first one is kind of what the texture is going to look like. And then these are all the maps that we were talking about. Well, in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up this first option, this uh, VAR1, the COL VAR1. So I'll just double click. I'll bring that in, 
and you can see how that material goes ahead and it updates within SketchUp. So, and the first thing you're going to notice is you're getting some tiling. And that's just because our sizing doesn't come in quite right. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to resize this using the materials section of your tray within SketchUp. So you're just going to go into materials, you're going to expand this, and you're going to click the edit button, making sure that this plaster material is selected. Um, if you don't see it, if it's not automatically selected, just go to the select tab and go up to end model and see if you can find that material. So in this case, I've got my plaster material right here selected that I'm editing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring up the size on this a little bit. So I'll move my asset editor out of the way. I'm just gonna bring this up to something like four feet and see what that looks like. So I'm gonna type in four feet, and then I'm gonna hit the tab key. That'll um, basically adjust the way this looks. And so you can see how when I adjust this up to four feet, this looks a lot more realistic. And one thing you may know is you're getting a little bit of uh, the way this texture is being applied in here, you're getting a little bit of weird overlap in here because it's not UV mapped properly. And so if you've applied this material to the outside of your group, what you can do is you can right click on it. You can go down to the V-Ray UV tools and just select this option for triplanar projection. And so what that's gonna do is you can see how that adjusted this material so that now when it comes around this edge, um, this is kind of matching up a little bit. And it's still not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. And it ought to look pretty good in our render. And so now we haven't set any of the maps up, but let's go ahead and run an interactive render. So if I click on interactive render, what that's gonna do is that's gonna render this image. And you can see how this is already a very realistic material. So just with the quality of the plaster texture that you've applied, um, this already looks really realistic, especially if you have your lighting set up right. So I'm pretty happy with the way this looks just in general, but let's go ahead and set up some of the maps and see what those are gonna do to our image. And so in this case, if we go back to our folder, and look at what gets downloaded in here, you can see how you're getting a couple different maps. In this case, we're getting a gloss map, a normal map, and a reflection map. And so let's go ahead and add our reflection map. And so in order to do that, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna look for the option for reflection. And I'm in V-Ray 3.6, so this may look a little bit different um, if you're somewhere else. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this option for reflection color. We're gonna add a bitmap and we're gonna go find this reflection map that's down here. And so that's gonna bring this in as a map of the material. And one thing to note on your reflection map is you need to come in here and you need to invert that texture in order for that to come in properly. So if I was to go ahead and rerun this material, so you can see how now I'm getting a little bit more reflection off of this face. So it's reflecting light, but in kind of a rough way, in kind of a realistic sort of way. And so in addition, we can also add our glossiness map. This is kind of reflecting the light a little bit. Um, it's giving us a pretty good image, but the last thing we want to do in this case is we want to add our normal map. And uh, there would be other maps to add if we'd gone with one of the more complex textures, but um, I really like the result that this one kind of spits out with little, little, not a whole lot of effort. So that's why I picked this one, but you're just going to go down to your maps option and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna turn on bump or normal mapping. And so what that means is we're gonna basically apply a map to this face that's gonna tell this where to make it bumpy, which is gonna make it look even more realistic. And if you remember, there was a normal map included in here that we can apply. And so in this case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click the little arrow, you're gonna select normal map instead of bump map, and then we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna click on this little box again. We're gonna to go to bitmap and we're gonna find our normal map. And in this case, our normal map is right here. So when we bring that in, that's basically gonna allow us to apply that normal map to this face to make it look even more bumpy and more realistic. And in this case, I think they recommend going with the linear option on here in the drop down. but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back 
and we're going to take a look at our render. And so you can see how we have a very realistic material in here um, based on that based on the different maps that we did without having to do a whole lot of extra work. And one thing I want to note is if you come in here and you turn off the diffuse map, so it's kind of hard to see the normal mapping sometimes. And so if you uncheck the box for the diffuse map and you zoom in, you can see how what this is doing is this is mapping that surface. You can see all the little imperfections that are in here. So if we turn that back on, you can see how those correspond to the little imperfections in the surface right here. So when you bring this in now, and you just take a look at it from a zoomed out standpoint and granted we could probably brighten up our lighting or something but this looks really realistic so i am planning on doing some more videos on using these textures as you can see they really help your render results but leave a comment below let me know what you thought let me know what you'd like to see if there's anything you'd like to see from these textures i just love having that sketchup conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new sketchup content every week if you like what i'm doing in this channel please consider subscribing supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.